Hər vaxtınız xeyr olsun, hörmətli tamaşaçılar. As TV xəbərin xüsusi buraxılışını təqdim edirik. Studiyada Rüya Bənən yarladır. Bugün Prezident İlham Əliyev İtaliyanın Çernobil şəhərində Saudi Arabistanın Investisiya Naziri Azərbaycan Respublikası ilə Saudi Arabistanı Krallığı arasında Hökumətlər Arası Müştərək Komissiyasının həmsədri Xalid bin Əbdülaziz Əl Falih ilə görüşüb. Bununla bağlı geniş reportaja ASTV xəbərin növbəti buraxılışlarında baxa bilərsiniz. Bugün İtaliyanın Çernobil şəhərində European House Ambrosetti Beyin Mərkəzi tərəfindən Dünya, Avropa və İtaliyaya baxış və rəqabətli strategiyalar üçün bugünün və sabahın sen Narisi mövzusunda 48-ci Beynəlxalq Çernobil forumu keçirilib. Beynəlxalq tədbirdə əsas qonaq qismində iştirak edən Azərbaycan Respublikasının prezidenti İlham Əliyev forumun plenar iclasında enerji təhlükəsizliyinin təmin olunmasında Azərbaycanın rolu mövzusunda çıxış edib. Çirnobiyadayıq. Villa Deste ənənəvi və sayıcə 48-ci forma ev sahibliyə edir. İtaliyanın bir nömrəli beyin mərkəzi olan European House Ambrosetsi tərəfindən təşkil olunan tədbirdə Prezident İlham Əliyevin çıxışı gözlənilir. Bu ilin aprelində Luigi Di Maio Azərbaycanda rəsmi səfərdə olarkən, Prezident İlham Əliyevə Çirnobil forumunda iştirakla bağlı dəvət göndərəndiyini bildirdi. European House Ambrosetti İtaliya və Avropa şirkətləri üçün vacib məsələlərin müzakirə olunduğu tədbirlər təşkil edir. You will see from the many speakers that there is a lot Bu tədbirdə bir çox çıxışçılar makro-iqtisadi trendlərə, həmçinin bunun siyasətə təsirinə diqqət çəkəcəklər. Məkan gözəldir. Bu, yay fəslindən sonra mövsümün ilk tədbiridir. Tədbirin ilk günü adətən əsas qlobal tədbirlərə həsr olunur və müzakirə edilən məsələlər iqtisadi, geosiyasi və elmi texnoloji xarakter daşıyır. İtaliya üçün xüsusi önəm kəsb edən ölkələrin dövlət ölkələt başçıları və rəsmi şəxsləri əsas qonaqlar qismində çıxış edir. Müxtəlif illərdə burada Rəcəb Tayyib Erdoğan, Vaclav Klaus, Joe Biden, Sergio Mattarella, Emmanuel Macron, Shimon Peres və digər siyasilərin iştirak olur. Burada olmaq və mühüm məsələləri müzakirə etmək bizim üçün vacibdir. İtaliya üçün, İtaliyalı iş adamları üçün bu, görüşmək, Avropa, İtaliya tənzimləyici orqanları ilə müzakirələr aparmaq üçün çox yaxşı imkandır. Düşünürəm ki, siz yaxın gələcəkdə böyük rol oynayacaqsınız. Çünki sahib olduğumuz enerji ilə siz hazırda Rusiyanın yaratdığı boşluğu doldura bilərsiniz. Zənnimcə, qarşıdakı 10 illikdə oyuncu olmaq üçün yaxşı mövqə edəsiniz. İki-üç ay bundan əvvəl Azərbaycanda səhiyyə ilə bağlı bir tədbirdə iştirak etdik. Biz bir çox ölkələrdə inkişaf etməkdə malaqlıyıq və hədəflərimizdən biri Azərbaycandır. One of the top issues these days is obviously about energy security and it's a pleasure for me welcoming the president of Azerbaijan, Aliyev, that will come into the room to give us a speech just about energy and security. President Aliyev, good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Buongiorno. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I'd like to express gratitude to the European House Ambrosetti for inviting me to participate at this important event. It's a great pleasure to be in this beautiful place and to enjoy your company. 
My visit to Italy started yesterday. Uh, I visit your country quite regularly. Last time I was here on a state visit in 2020 when we signed a strategic document on partnership between Italy and Azerbaijan. This visit also was very successful. I had very good meetings with Mr. President, with uh, Mr. Prime Minister, and we discussed a broad range of issues of close strategic partnership cooperation between our countries. Also, I'd like to add that uh, President Mattarella, four years ago, paid an official visit to Azerbaijan. So this uh, shows that uh, our political dialogue is very active. And we add to bilateral agenda new very important items. One of them is education. So we talked yesterday not only about energy issues, economic development, but also about education. And yesterday in the building of uh, Azerbaijani embassy in Rome, there was an excellent ceremony which marked the beginning of creation of Italian Azerbaijan University. Ada University of Azerbaijan is a partner to five leading Italian universities, uh, Louis University, uh, Milan Technological University, Turin Technological University, Bologna University, and Sapienza University of Rome. So that means that our agenda is very broad, but of course, main subject of discussions was energy policy, especially in these difficult times. To talk about Azerbaijan's role for energy security, I need to draw your attention to some historical moments. Uh, our energy strategy has been divided into stages. At the first stage, just uh, three years after restoration of our independence in 1994, Actually, we were the first country which invited major energy companies of the world to work in the Caspian Sea. And uh, very soon we became an uh, exporter of um, oil to European market, primarily to Italy. And um, Azerbaijan is number one oil supplier to Italy for many years. But being a landlocked country, we needed to have export pipelines, so we led the process of uh, changing the energy map of Eurasia, building two strategic oil pipelines, one to Mediterranean port of Turkey, another to Black Sea port of uh, Georgia, thus diversifying the energy supplies to Black Sea market and world market. Uh, second stage of our energy strategy was um, development of huge gas fields. Uh, according to the information about proven reserves of Azerbaijan, they're equal to 2.6 trillion cubic meters. And uh, Azerbaijan, for many years, already for more than 10 years, is a reliable supplier to the neighboring market. But of course, taking into account the existing potential and uh, our plans of uh, investments in uh, gas infrastructure, we needed to build a major gas uh, supply pipeline, which was called by us uh, Southern Gas Corridor. Southern Gas Corridor is an integrated pipeline system consisting of three pipelines, South Caucasus Pipeline, Trans Anatolian, TANAP, and Trans Adriatic, TAP, which ends here in Italy. This is a 3,500 kilometers a very complicated technical infrastructure, partly goes uh, across high mountains, partly goes on the seabed. And the last day of uh, 2020, on the 31st December, the final part of that uh, major project, TAP, was inaugurated. Since that time, for one year and a half, Azerbaijan became a supplier of natural gas to free European countries, apart from Turkey and Georgia. 13.5 uh, billion cubic meters of gas have been supplied to Europe for one and a half year, 11.7 billion out of that to Italy. And uh, this year we plan to increase the volume and we project to supply Italian market with close to 10 billion 
cubic meters. Uh, our total export will be more than 22 billion cubic meters and with great potential to grow. Last month in Baku, uh, Madam Ursula von der Leyen, President of European Commission and myself, signed a memorandum of understanding on strategic partnership in the energy field between European Commission and Azerbaijan. This is a very important uh, step towards uh, further um, development of our energy resources. And based on that, I called it the roadmap for the future. We will uh, plan, I'm sure we will achieve it, to double our energy, uh, natural gas export to Europe. But for that, we need to undertake uh, important steps, political decisions, technical steps, and of course investments. Because the capacity of Southern Gas Corridor, different segments is different. TANAP has capacity of 16 billion cubic meters. We plan to expand it up to 32. And TAP has a capacity of 10 billion cubic meters, and it's almost full. So we need to expand it at least to 20. That will need, of course, additional financial contribution. As a country, as an investor, we are ready to do it, but that also must be done by other members of our team. At the same time, now in Europe, we see that um, after the Russian-Ukrainian war, the issue of natural gas became one of the most important on uh, European's agenda. And there are different projects of interconnectors. One of them, Greece-Bulgaria, is very close to be inaugurated. There are other projects of that kind. There is one project which is called Ionic Adriatic Pipeline, which will um, bring Azerbaijani gas to free Balkan countries. Uh, in general, I can tell you that after the beginning of uh, Russian-Ukrainian war, we got uh, official requests from more than 10 countries with respect to the increase of our supply or starting our supply, including those countries which already get our gas, like Turkey, Georgia, Italy, and Bulgaria, and many more. So in order to be able to satisfy the growing demand, we, of course, need to have a very close uh, cooperation and coordination. For that purpose, we already officially launched the dialogue between EU and Azerbaijan on energy, which will cover not only natural gas, but other uh, segments of energy market, particularly electric energy, hydrogen, and green hydrogen. And this brings us to the third stage of Azerbaijan's energy strategy, which is uh, investments in renewable sources of energy. We started this process several years ago, though, as you uh, can understand with those figures which I uh, brought to your attention, we are pretty comfortable with natural gas and with oil, and our power stations work both on natural gas and on fuel oil and also on hydro resources. But it was our, how to say, uh, moral commitment to invest in renewables, especially taking into account the huge potential. And they've been already made the evaluation of the potential of renewable energy in Azerbaijan. So only in Azerbaijani sector of the Caspian Sea, the proven uh, potential is 157 gigawatt of energy. In the territories which we liberated during the Patriotic War of 2020, in Karabakh and Zangizur, the potential of solar, wind, and hydro energy is more than 10 gigawatt. And we are already in the process of uh, development of this huge potential. I can tell you that three uh, leading energy companies, one from Saudi Arabia, one from UAE, and one from United Kingdom, already are investing and planning to invest in three uh, renewable power stations of total capacity of more than 700 megawatts. So that will save us additional gas for export, and that will increase our export potential. Today we are talking about how to bring our electric energy to Europe through existing line, which goes through Georgia, Turkey, Bulgaria, and further to Europe, or through new line, 
Zangezur corridor, which has a great potential also for alternative energy supply route. So these are basically three stages of our energy development, which today are, uh, how to say, needed not only in Europe, but uh, on a broader market. And we are ready to do all what we can in order to satisfy the growing needs of our partners. It is clear that energy security is national security. And after the war in Ukraine started, it is clearer than ever before. So thank you for your attention. And uh, once again, thank you for inviting me to attend this important event. Thank you, President Kadyrova. Would you like me for a couple of questions? Yeah, OK, this side. Uh, actually, the side was this oh, one, okay. but that's fine, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> as you wish. Just because you have your yes, name yes. there, so it's going to be much better. And thanks for your speech, because actually it's exactly in the middle of the issue here, because we're discussing in my country, all over Europe, the energy situation is at the key. But let me just ask you something. You know, uh, there's an, a regional issue out there. And I couldn't just ask myself, listening to you, how difficult should it be uh, being uh, in the region, having historic ties to Russia, and try to figure out what's your own politics out there. How do you cope with that? That's difficult, no? <laughs> uh, it may seem difficult, but that's our history, that's our geography, and we live in this geography forever. And uh, neither we nor our neighbors can change this geography. I think the success of our country in uh, political development and strengthening of independence, we celebrated last year 30th anniversary of our independence, demonstrates that it is possible to build normal relations with neighbors and at the same time uh, with big neighbors, much bigger than you are, and at the same time to preserve your identity, national identity, independence, and your independent political uh, course. And uh, with respect to relations with our neighbors, I can say that we always try to find areas of cooperation and those areas which uh, were problematic or where we had a different approach, we always articulated that. We never adjusted ourselves to a policy of our big neighbors. We always had our own policy, which is based on international law, justice, uh, decisions and resolutions of uh, international organizations and common sense. And that's why I think we succeeded. Azerbaijan now is stable from political point of view, from economic point of view. We invested a lot in being independent from point of view of uh, economic activity. Otherwise, we would have felt under dependence. So we've been part of empires. We've been part of Soviet Union. Now, 30 years, our people live free, and we want to live free forever. For that, we must be strong. We must have good friends and partners. It's so important what you're saying. And uh, you know, I was listening while you were mentioning uh, the new ties in the region, and not just in the region, uh, with, uh, with Italy, with my country, about uh, culture or education, and all those ties that are connected to energy and to the energy exchange. In the next panel, we will be discussing the new global order. Seen from your perspective, seen from your country, how is it going to shape? Well, it depends on many uh, circumstances. Of course, um, difficult to predict what will be the new global order, but it is clear that the world will never um, be as it was uh, before February this year. The world has changed, and how this change will uh, evaluate, it will depend on a variety of factors. It will depend on how long the war in Ukraine continues. It will depend on what will be the end of that war what will be the balance of forces in the world and, of course, in the region. Uh, for us, the most important, as a country which is relatively newly independent, important is to protect us from external uh, problems and external uh, challenges. Because internally, our country is well integrated, society is uh, mobilized, there is a unity in what we are planning to do and how to develop the country. 
Therefore, for us, the most important is what will be the implication of new global order to our region, what will be the position of big regional uh, countries, how we will succeed in our um, plans to uh, achieve peace with Armenia, and what will be the future of, uh, of our children and uh, new generations. Therefore, uh, we are observing situation. Of course, we are um, making our steps with respect to our strategy, but at the same time, we cannot ignore the changing world, changing rules of the game, when law norms of international law absolutely are totally destroyed. And in our case, they were destroyed when Armenia occupied us, and we were actively appealing to international community to draw attention for that uh, injustice when our lands were under occupation. And Security Council resolutions of United Nations for 27 years were not implemented. Now we see a violation of international law in many other areas. And we see that countries which think that they can ignore them, they do ignore them openly. So this is absolutely new situation. What will be the new order of the world? What will be the new function of international institutions? Whether the United Nations will continue uh, like it is, or it will be reformed, or some other organization will emerge. All that is possible. And it depends on those who uh, have uh, responsibility for the world, who have power to promote the ideas and uh, integrated opinion of decision makers. Definitely, this is going to be one of the key issues for uh, next decades. I'm not going to say years. Uh, uh, President Aliyev, it has been a pleasure and a privilege talking to you. And thanks for your insightful views Thank you. that you share with us. Thank you. <laughs>Dövlətimizin başçısı salamlara və təbriklərə görə minnətdarlığını bildirdi. Onun da salamlarını Səudi Ərəbistanının kralına çatdırmağı xayiş etdi. Nazir işxaldan azad edilən ərazilərimizdə hazırda bərpa yenidən qurma işlərinin sürətlə həyata keçirilməsindən məmnunluğunu bildirdi. Söhbət zamanı iqtisadi əlaqələrinin inkişaf etdirilməsi, o cümlədən Səudi Ərəbistanının Aquapower şirkətinin bərpa olunan enerji sayəsində ölkəmizdə həyata keçirdiyi layihə, həmçinin enerji xüsusilə neft-qaz sayəsində əməkdaşlıq barədə fikir mübadəsi aparıldı. Bu ilin sonuna qədər Səudi Ərəbistanının bir sıra şirkətlərinin və iş adamlarının işxaldan azad edilmiş ərazilərə səfəri barədə ilkin razılıq əldə olundu. Prezident İlham Əliyev sensiyabrın ikisində Çernobya şəhərində İtaliyanın İnsole Ventik Vatroli qəzətinin müxbiri Roberto Bongiorniyə müsahibə verib. Belə hürməti tamaşaçılar, bu saata çatıracağımız məlumatlar da bu qədər. Salamat qalın.